Okay. This is part two. Uh, we're doing the ring fading away and the light for part two. Okay, see how the ring fades away into that invisible material we made in part one? And then the light flash, okay? So that's our job to do today. So we have two materials. We made the fire material, which is color, luminance, transparency, alpha glow. We may have to adjust that still, but for now we'll leave it as it is. And then an invisible material, which is just color and transparency turned on with no reflectance. And we're gonna make one fade into the other, okay? In order to do that, uh, you're going to go to an area in your movie uh, where you want the um, color to last up to. So where should it start beginning to fade? And um, so I'm going to click on the material tag over here. And we're going to go to like, uh, let's say, I want the fire to last till about here. So like maybe right about here, and then it fades away here. So I'm gonna say, let's try 115. I like to go even numbers. All right, now the way that we animate it, um, first of all, what I wanna show you here is um, we click on the texture tag. And I found that thing, by the way, that I was talking about in the last like. So when we select it, it gets a little gold box around it. And um, we're gonna go down to where it says tag. And the thing I was talking about last uh, lesson that I recorded was under material where there's a animate preview. This is what I this is where I forgot the where this was. So you just click that on and it should if you look at the fire now when we scrub it, you see how it's moving around now? It should do that for you, which is kind of neat cuz it gives you sort of an idea how it's going to move around. As far as the animation preview goes here, I have that disabled on your computer because not everybody has a mouse with a working button. And then when we turn on the buttons of the mouse, uh, it screws up people that are not using them. So I just kind of have that disabled for you. And you, if you have a wheel on your mouse, don't use it. It's not intended for scrolling around. I'm talking about the like pressing in a button for like the sides, um, like left click, right click on your mouse or whatever. The Apple mice have. Uh, their buttons in different places than like a PC mouse. Anyway, don't do that. Um, just make sure you can turn on animated preview, okay? All right, so we're gonna go to um, where it says material up here. Do you see there's a bullet? So I rolled up that arrow right there to get rid of that. Animated preview is under that, okay? Where you can roll that up and you can go to editor, animated preview, okay? Otherwise I'm gonna roll it up and get rid of it. Where it says Matt, that is my material name. Um, I could go down here and name the material. If I double click on the word, I could call it fire. And I could double click on the word Matt one down there and call it inviso for invisible. So I changed the name down here just by double clicking on the word, type it. Now the material up here says fire instead of just material. It might be easier for you to do that. All right, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna just click on the tag. So you get over here to where it says tag. You wanna be on the tag area. And where it says material, it says fire now because I renamed the material. So up until um, that point of 120, 115, I think I was at, that's where I wanted it to last till. So I'm gonna hit record. And then I want it to completely dissipate or disappear by, um, I'm gonna scrub it. I don't want it to be dissipating and then disappear after the pieces are moving. Are they too small to see? So I'm gonna say maybe like 155. And I'm gonna drag up the new material and drop it right on top of the old material. So you see I replaced it with the new invisible material. And now it says inviso there, so it shows me that I've replaced the material, and I record it. And now you're not gonna see it actually transition on the screen, but you will see it skip. So it'll go from one material to the next. Okay, to demonstrate that a little bit better, we'll just, uh, we'll make two new materials down here. And I'll make one, um, red and I'll make the other one um, blue 
All right, so we have two materials. I'm gonna make a sphere and I'm gonna drag on the red material. I'm gonna go over where it says material and click record at the beginning of my movie. I'm gonna scrub to the end of my movie, uh, frame 90, and I'm gonna drag up and replace the red material with the blue material. So I drop it right on the old one. And then I hit where it says material or out there, I hit record. So the beginning keyframe is red, the ending keyframe is blue, all right? Now, what you're not gonna see is a transition from red to blue, which means you'll get some purple shades and stuff. What you're gonna see is it just switches over. If I were to do a test render on this, which I'm gonna show you how to do later, um, we'll just go to a really low resolution. And then we'll save it, we'll call it testing. color change or transition however you want to call it we'll do it to the desktop and we'll tell it to be a mp4 not zero. okay so now to render this into a movie now you're seeing this actually render which it's only 90 frames so it's very quick did you see how it changed right there like I can kind of like scrub back. You see how it goes and fades from red into blue. I'm gonna close this file. I don't want to save it. I don't want to save that either. Um, but here it is on my desktop. I can open it with QuickTime, and there's the animation. So what'll happen is your fire shader will slowly fade into invisible and disappear. So that's the whole point of what we just did. Okay. So now we'll hit play. We'll kind of test it a little bit, and then it should disappear, boop, there we go. And then lastly, we want to do a light, a flare up. So you're going to take a light, you're going to need two lights. You're going to need one light on the outside as sort of a, um, a light to illuminate your planet. And then we're going to need a, a secondary light source that will cause a flash, okay? Let's just do the flash one for now. So we're gonna take that and put it on the inside of your planet. When you do that, everything turns pitch black because there's no light now, which is why sometimes we'll make a secondary light so that there is another light source, okay, that you can see the planet with. Another thing you can do though is to go to that original light, and remember we did this on First Standard General, and put on no illumination, and um, that will, you can render, and you'll see that it's not doing anything, okay? We want to flare up, so we need a flash, all right? And so the way we're gonna do this light, uh, let's look at one that's already done, is we're gonna go to the details and you're going to basically let me roll some of these things up you're going to basically um, animate the brightness and you're going to animate the lens okay so we're going to have two lights animating we're going to have a a flashy lens and we're going to have uh, a flare-up of another light that'll create those shadowy effects you know where it's hitting the chunks of pieces and creating those neat like striations so you're going to need two lights possibly three for the uh, outside light if you want to illuminate it so the first light, um, let's do just the flare up and then the second light, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate um, shadow maps and stuff. We're gonna set that light to be a little bit different, okay? All right, so back to the thing. So the first light, uh, go to your light bulb, there's your light, uh, and you're gonna do it just like your sun. So you're gonna go pick a lens. I'll do, um, I'll do blue, because my flames are blue, so I want that to kind of be blue also. 
And so what I'm going to do here is when do you think it's going to flare up? Like when are you going to see it like starting to flare up? So kind of like growing with the explosion. So I'm going to say like maybe frame 59 or 60. So at the beginning of my movie for the light flare up, I want my brightness to be a zero and my scale to be zero. So there's no light at all. So I record those right there and right there. And then we scrub ahead to where we want it to begin flaring up. And um, I'm going to put that at 100. Oops, clicked off of it, sorry. 100 and 100 and record it. Then we're going to do two, we're going to do a couple of keyframes here. A typical sequence is like, um, like a step. Uh, is a start, a middle, and then back to the beginning again. So you can create like a, a sequence. Okay, so um, we have it off, on, and then off. All right, but this one we're going to have it flare up even higher. So I'm going to say like frame 90. I'm going to flare it up to like 150. And all this is adjustable. And record that. And then it's going to fade back to nothing here. We'll do it on frame one. You can step it forward one step with this little part of the uh, play tool there. So I'm going to put it down there to zero again and record it. So you're not going to see it on the screen here. I mean, you can, you can like stop and render and see what that looks like. See there, it's fading away. I want it to last a little bit longer, so I'm going to actually click on that. Um, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click on that. Oh, I can actually, I can get it. I'm going to move the keyframe over to 180. So right at this point, it's not faded completely because the animated shader. I kind of want that to disappear first. So it starts at nothing. It sort of like kind of shines a little bit, and then it flares up really big. If you want like a bada boom, you know, where um, I call it a bada boom, but the timing is like ba boom. If you look at this one, you can see like there, like there's a double flash, like multiple explosions are happening in the same thing. You can do that. All right, so that light is done. Ba boom. All right, now the only other light we need to do now is go to. Um, I remember on that light, you don't want any illumination on. The next light you have to have illumination on, so I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need a, um, another light here to see it. Uh, and so I'm gonna make a, a third light just have in front there. The next light though that animates, uh, you're gonna be in the middle of your planet and what you're gonna do under general is you're going to um, animate the intensity. But before we do that, we have to pick a color for this light to be. So I'm going to pick like a blue tone because everything else is blue. All right. And then uh, I'm going to go to close that color wheel. I'm going to go to intensity. That's a, that's going to be where I animate it. But the settings on the light are going to be for type that you're going to have to do shadow and visible light. These three things. And the type should be Omni. That's omnidirectional means everything at once, all directions. Shadow is going to be shadow map soft. And then you're going to go to visible light and put it on volumetric. Volumetric is a physical beam of light that you can see, like the bat signal or a flashlight or a laser beam or a carnival when they get people to come over to the carnival and stuff. And um, you're going to check that and tell it how, like, how far and how visible those beams will be by going over to um, uh, visibility here, this button right there. And you're gonna go to where the inner and outer distance are. And so let's, let's get to the point where you can actually see the planet busted up, because that's the whole point of this part. And on visibility, I'm gonna make the outer distance 
about as big as these rings um, for the gravity and the timing of the explosion. So let's try to stretch it out that far. You can do it by hand. And then the inner distance should be about less than half of that. Okay? So you're doing, you got to do inner and outer distance. You have to do the outer first and then you can do the inner. That's how far the physical beam of light will be. So now we're going to render this up here with our render button and see what that looks like. And you can see I'm getting these really cool shadows from where the light is hitting the chunks. And if you want even better shadows, you could always go to your explosion FX and maybe like, okay, you know, maybe I'll make some of these pieces like a little bit bigger, you know, and, and there'll be more um, chunks to block the light and you'll get some even more shadow effect. And you can scroll back. As long as you can see that little starburst there, you'll see this effect. If you can't see that starburst, you're not going to see that effect it'll be blocked. So if I can't see it, I'm not going to see anything coming out of there very well. All right. Now the only thing that I'm unhappy with, and you're going to have to go back and forth between your lights, is the flare up of, let's render it, the flare up of the other light is getting a little lost. Um, on this one, okay? And so I wanna make sure that, um, and you might wanna name your lights like explosion light or explosion flash might be a better. And then beams of light Okay, and then the other one's just, uh, the other one's not required, it's just there so we can see it. You're going to have another light in your, your solar system, so you don't really need that one. That's just, I'm, I put it here so you could see it better, but you could make one if you wanted to. Um, so let's go to the beams of light, and I have not uh, changed my intensity here. Um, so I want to put the intensity on maybe zero at this point and record it and then major flare up here. I want it maybe like 120%. All right, so let's, let's look at that. So there's my explosion. Okay, and so then nothing's happening there. And so I might want to have this move forward a little bit. So I have some light. And then my explosion FX, uh, their explosion flash, I mean, which is done under lens. Okay, I can see that that's 100. That's getting a little lost in the other effect. Let's see if we can see that a little bit better. There we go. That light for some reason, when you're fooling around with, I don't, I think this is a bug in the software to be honest, but, and it's always been like this since like from 20 years ago, version six, is um, when you have a lens flare, if you can't see, that little starburst right there that makes up the lens flare, like if something's blocking it, uh, like a, a, maybe a chunk of rock or whatever it happens to be. I don't know how it even knows, but like if any of these debris pieces block the, cover up that little asterisk and you can't see it with your naked eye, if there's not a clear line of vision, it will block the effect. So there it's, it's visible, but if I adjust my view a little bit, like so that big chunk is blocking it. So like you can see like this big chunk right there is, um, is physically blocking it. We can't see that little starburst. You don't see the light. 
And so it's kind of weird. So we're going to make sure that we we can see that. And I don't think it's intended to be that way. I think it's just kind of a flaw in the software, like a little bug they never worked out. So we'll just adjust your viewing angle. Boom. So it's all timing. Okay, now I could render this, but it'll take a little bit too long for the, the lesson. Um, but that's it for now. That is the, all the planet explosion. You'll have to like kind of go back and be an editor and kind of adjust here and there to fine tune it and get it to be, you know, perfect. But that is essentially the whole lesson broken into two halves. Um, I, I hope the lessons aren't too long. I think the first one is 28 minutes. That's why I cut it short. But um, I'll talk about it in class and we'll have plenty of time to work on it. So no rush. We've got all the time in the world. And good luck.